cool. Okay. So, and then, you know how we've been doing this thing where we've been like crossing the shins more in that like Sukhasana? Uh Right. So like you're, so that's a little bit, see when I sit by you, like, like you, I, my knees are really wide, lean back, push the feet forward. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now do exactly that, but you need to face the front of your mat. Uh, In that, but perfect, perfect, perfect. So I'm going to scoop quite close to the front. Then I'm going to drop down onto my elbows, Kendall. Yep. And I'm going to make sure that I tuck like the flesh of my buttocks under, kind of drag it away. Yeah. You should feel your low back just kind of got long. Mm -hmm. And then you lie all the way down. Yeah. Do you feel that as a little bit of a stretch in the front of your hip? Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, nice. So, like, so we always start, like, with bottoms of the feet together and knees apart. And that really, like, stretches the inner leg. This is slightly different. And then let's take the arms out to the side. Cactus arms. Good. And then close your eyes. So I want you to picture that you're cutting like a chocolate frosting birthday cake. And you take out like a clean, sharp knife. And you cut one slice. And then you go to cut the next slice. But it's got a little bit of frosting on it and some crumbs. But like it's not a big deal. You can still cut that second slice. But then you go to cut the third slice and now it's becoming like a little bit harder to to do it exactly how you want. And then finally it gets to the point where there's so much frosting, so many crumbs that the knife is dull, it's dirty, it's carrying the weight of all this frosting and crumbs. And I'm sure you can kind of see where I'm going with this metaphor, right? We do this in our lives. We we take a feeling or an email from Monday and we let it bother us and we start ruminating and thinking about it more and more on Tuesday. And then maybe it creates tension and we feel like up around the neck or Maybe in your stomach, you feel sick, right? And you just keep taking it until you feel clouded and dull. And so the idea here, use your breath. Oh, like we're going to clean off that night. Take an inhale. And then out through the mouth, exhale. And like, I really like imagine like the breath, almost like my spine is the knife and I'm just like sliding all the way up, cleaning it off. And then we exhale, getting rid of it. Another breath, inhale. Exhale. Try to keep that steady, even rhythmic breathing. And then we're going to use our elbows, keeping the legs to come back up through center. Sit all the way up. Then as you sit all the way up, fold out over your legs here. And so sometimes the knife that needs to be cleaned in our lives is something mental. 
like some thoughts that you just need to shed. Other times it's something like emotional. And we can feel it like that, our issues building up in our tissues, that feeling of the tension we store in the physical body. Inhale. Exhale. Come up through center. Just to that point where you can change the cross of your shin bone so that we keep it balanced. And then help yourself back, lower down onto your elbows. Don't forget the little extra tucking under, clearing out of your low back as you come to lie all the way down. And then this time you might have a little bit more space to draw your arms up overhead and grab opposite arm, opposite elbow. And so if we can clear things out on a moment to moment, basis it's a lot like the buddhist saying that you can't step in the same river twice always flowing it's always moving and that keeps us off of autopilot it keeps us from dragging the old stuff into the present moment Inhale slowly. Exhale deeply. Softening any tension in the low back, in the ribs. Again, inhale. Exhale. One more, breathe in. Breathe out. We're gonna keep our legs as you release your elbow. Walk up onto forearm. Press up onto your palm. And try to pour yourself forward here out over your legs. So even as I was doing this, like in my effort, like to feel what I felt before, I'm like over efforting. Instead, treat it as each breath, a new part of the river flowing by you, soft through the shoulders. Inhale. Exhale. Let's back up through center. As you sit up, we're going to come to lie all the way down. And now unwind your legs, step your feet wide, keeping your knees wide, arms out to the side. So we really feel our chest is open. Inhale at center. And then exhale, drop both knees over to the right as you look to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, knees to the left as you look to the right. And continue. Inhale. Exhale. So this is like that kind of clearing out sensation, getting our hips ready for more movement back up. Yep. And then go ahead, exactly, kind of on your own breath pace. Something that feels soothing. So hopefully you're in air conditioning, but like here, it's been very hot, like hotter than I've ever remembered. And I'm just having to kind of like work with the energy, work with the heat. It's nice. It warms you up, right? But you just might feel like you've got to move a little slower. Okay. We're going to do this one together. Inhale up center. Exhale over to the left. Good. Inhale up through center. And then over to the right, hold. 
Take the pinky edge side of your right foot on top of your left thigh. Outer left knee, pull it forward and down. And then lengthen your left arm. And if at any point today, Kendall, right, like if you have a wall or a bed or something that it seems like it's in your way, it's actually really not in your way. It's almost there to help you to either push into it or resist against it. You had to find more space. And this is the idea. I think of like almost my bones, like the blade of the knife. And I'm trying to like pull through the skin and the muscle and get all the way down to the bone and clean out that tension. Release the foot, come back through center. And change sides. Windshield wiper the knees to the left. Left foot outside edge, right knee, squeeze the right thumb a little. So that's like some support. And then lengthen and extend right arm. Okay. And the feeling of like kind of stretching through the abdominals, just specifically using that to down regulate your nervous system. Right. And especially like on a Friday night, well, it's morning, I guess, for you, but like kind of clear out the week, wipe it away, get it out of the body, and then come back to center, stepping the feet into the mat. Now, hip width distance apart. Okay. Left ankle crosses over the top of your right knee. Preparing for thread the needle. Left hand goes through and then interlace the fingers over your right shin bone and draw that in. If you want a little rocking pulse, right, you can push the knee away from you and then use the elbows bending to squeeze in. I like to think kind of open, make some space. And as I keep my tailbone and sacrum flat, drawing in, one more, inhale, up the front of the spine, exhale, squeezing down into the hip. Now, this is a little bit different. Take the arms out to the side. We're going to flex both feet. We're going to make sure that we keep the structure of your legs exactly the same. Roll to the outside edge of your right hip. Put your right knee down and actually your left foot steps into the yoga mat and make sure your right knee Kendall is as high as your right hip. So draw the knees closer in towards your chest. Yep, so back out, yep, back out. Put your left ankle over your right knee again. Yep, keep your right knee drawn in towards your chest, like really tight, squeeze the right, yes. So that then when you drop your right knee, it stays as high as your right hip. Uh-uh. Yep. Look towards me. Right. So we're going to drop the right knee. We're coming into a twist in the lower body. Right knee. All there you go. Good. And then, yeah, your right knee stays where it is. You got to kind of lock it there. And then use your right hand and press your left knee away from you. I actively hate this stretch. Like, it really gets something that I don't normally get into. Now, when I press my knee, I get some movement. But if I slide that right hand down more to like the center of my left upper leg and push that away, I feel like it's almost like the suction cup of my left hip starts to open. And then I like to lengthen my left arm over the left ear. So for a lot of people, and the more I move that right hand down for a lot of people, the first time that they understand like making space in the hip joint instead of letting it collapse. Unwind the left foot from your right knee as you come back to center. Reset the body, kind of feel that. Inhale. Exhale, right ankle crosses over the top of the left knee. Prepare for thread the needle, right hand through, interlace fingers. Go ahead and get your rocking movement here. Take 
So I think sometimes I have like a resistance to going into the, the sensations, but that's because I approach it with the same energy. Like I expect it to feel like it felt before instead of like fresh river, new pose, new breath, explore it with curiosity. What's too much, not what's not enough as you squeeze it in. Okay, release your hands. Keep that left knee drawn in towards your chest. Foot is flexed. And then with the left knee staying as high as your left hip, come into that lower body twist. Stepping your right foot. So I feel like your left knee slid forward. Yep. Yeah. Good. And then go ahead. Use that left hand. Push the right knee away from you. Aha, uh -huh, there you go. Do you feel that? Yeah. 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 A very different one for me. I got to really lock my right ankle and my left knee together and then keep exploring, moving that left hand. Does it give you more power to really move the bone? As I try to soften the right shoulder blade down and reach out through right fingertips. Good. Maybe that left hand goes all the way up into the right hip crease. I can like feel my femur bone and I try to push it away. And then release. Coming back to center, stepping the feet into the mat. So what clearing out my knife feels like is like I feel blood flow now. Like I feel my hips, they don't, they don't feel as stuck. Now, bring your feet and knees together and cross your left upper leg over your right leg. So your legs are fully crossed. Good. And then draw your knees in towards your chest. I usually like to hold the back knee. Yep, and draw that in. And it's almost like a sandwich. You're trying to squeeze that back right knee in, trying to sandwich that left upper leg. Good. Flex both feet like we've been doing, locking through the ankle joint, pulling on the knee. Lift up your head and your upper back. So do a little sit up here. And then take your hands underneath the bottoms of your feet and grab the pinky edge sides of your feet. Uh, underneath the bottom, Kendall, it'll be easier. Yep, good. And then lower your upper back and head back down. Top knee presses into bottom knee, bottom knee. And I got to pause for a second and I got to remind myself to relax through the hip flexors, soften the belly. And if you want more, you start to pull the feet away from the hip. Yeah. Little bend to the elbow as you imagine pulling the feet towards the armpits for two. Inhale. Exhale for three. Release the feet. You might want to rock your hips. You might want to shake out your legs. And so for me, that's the equivalent to of like, let it flow out. But feet together, knees together, and right leg. Big cross from the upper thigh, draping that right leg. I think it should be your right leg now, kind of right leg up and over. Yep, good. Yep. And squeeze the knees in towards your chest. Did you already do that side? No, this is the, yeah. Okay, this. good. Okay, this is, this is correct. Okay, yep. So we're pulling the back knee in. I think you're making a little panini press as you try to squeeze that right thigh. Very good for like broadening and opening the low back. Yep. Lift up, flex 
feet, hands go underneath the bottoms of your feet as you try to grab the pinky edge side. This is called supta, reclined gomukhasana. And you use that like leverage of your chest melting down, your head melting down. And then you probably have to check in. Can you relax the hips? Off in the belly. If you want more, you move the feet away from the outer hip. And then maybe bend the elbows a little. You feel that opening there. Inhale. Exhale. Unwind the legs. You might even want like an exhale out through the mouth and then just check like my spine lengthened a lot. Okay, take the heels of your hands with your knees bent. Take the heels of your hands right into your hip creases. Yep. Take an inhale. And as you straighten your arms, press your femur bones away from you. Notice the belly drops, the abdominals lengthen. I can even walk my shoulders back a little bit, get taller through the spine. Put traction on your low back, soften your elbows, relax, inhale. Push the femur bones away. For me, I just keep thinking like a suction cup, like I'm un. Sticking that area, elbows bend one more time. See what you can soften as you inhale. And then push away and enjoy. Belly dropping down. Shoulders walking back. Decompressing your spine. Good. Soften there, really. And then drop your knees over to the right. As you come up to find seated, and this is where you're going to want to face me. Okay, so you're going to bring that right shin bone parallel. So I'm basically only sitting on my right hip. And I look to make sure that that, it should look kind of like it would in a pigeon, right? Foot is flexed always. And then that left foot is just going to tuck in to the outside edge of your left hip. Uh-huh. Pointing the toe. And yeah, you've got like a nice little pocket, right? Where like the arch of your right foot kind of fits into your left knee. Plant your right hand out to the side, leaning into it a little. And now inhale open and do all the movements here, Kendall, of like a cow pose. So arch the low back, open the chest, and now take that left hand, thread it underneath your right elbow and reach and do all the movements that you would in a cat pose, tucking the tailbone under, pushing the floor away. And then we continue, inhale, open. Yep, all the movements of cow pose. Exhale, round, reach, bra. One more time, please, inhale, open. Thoracic mobility. Move from your left ribs, your left lung, your left shoulder. Twist. Now, plant both hands at the back of your mat and see how far you can kind of keep walking backwards. Push your knee and foot together. And then can you come down onto your elbows? Good. As we push the foot and knee together, squeeze your abdominals. Remember the feeling of stretching your belly button away from the pubic bone. Think cobra in your chest. And then I'm going to keep all the weight in that back elbow and maybe, oh, sorry, yeah, in your right elbow. And then stretch your left arm towards the corner of your room. If you've got a wall, if you've got that corner to push. Yeah, and then I have to really think about it. 
I want to feel this stretch out of the back of my left hip. I'm like clawing at the floor. Like I'm pulling it towards me to keep stretching the ribs. And then I put a lot of weight into my elbow. And as I push into it, I try to twist a little bit more. Release as you come back up through center. Cross that left shin in front of your right and just kind of feel here for a moment. Good. Excellent. Left hand out. Connect. Inhale, open. Exhale. Push into the back hand. Try to round into your upper back like a cat pose. Very good. Follow your breath. I'm going to inhale, open. Close. Open. Close. Keep closing, keep closing, keep closing until you can walk more to the back of your mat. Press the foot and the knee together. That's going to stabilize as we try to bring both elbows down onto the mat. Everything starts from your foundation, from the stability in the legs up through the pelvic floor. Stretch the belly long. And then like when I feel sensation, I'm kind of like, thank God, because that must be somewhere where my like proverbial knife is clogged up and I want to clean it out. Belly button, heart, stretching it forward like a cobra. Keep the weight in that back arm. And then can you walk the right arm away from the diagonal? Even if I squeeze my butt muscle just a little bit, it's more like toning it. I get more sensation of lengthening up and out. And then take your time as you release to come up through center. Wrap that right shin bone around and just come to seated here. Yeah, check. You might need an exhale breath out through the mouth. Perfect. Okay, we're going to take our legs in front of us. I'm going to scoot more a little bit like towards the front edge of my mat. Yep, good. Knees are bent. Hands back behind you. Drop both knees over to the right into that. Unfortunately, it kind of looks like half of a swastika, right? Keep going, Kendall, until your right knee is all the way down. Yep, so pick up your left hand. Yeah, turn towards your back. There you go. Good. Okay. Now, can you frame your front right foot with your hand? So look at the camera. So bring your left foot onto the outside edge of your right foot. Sorry, left hand, outside edge of right foot. So we're going to try to... Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I'm going to hold on to that right foot with both hands. Uh huh. And I'm going to try to pull my heart over that right foot and fold in. You get that stretch in your back right hip? Yeah. Good. So I'm always driving my right heel into my hand and pulling my hand into my foot to help me drive or like pull farther down and in. And then it's a little bit more of an advanced cue, but just imagine pushing that right butt cheek towards the wall back behind you. The more you push it back behind you, can you fold in any deeper? Inhale. Exhale. Think of it almost like a child pose, trying to drop the rib cage down onto the thigh. Come back up through center. Keep your legs. Walk both hands towards the door. Walk both hands back towards the wall, back behind you. 
push into that backhand, twist, and then drop down onto your forearms. Mm -hmm. The more you push into the back elbow, that should be your right elbow. Drag long spine. And if you want to stretch the left hand away, lengthen or push it into the wall, find a push pull action. So how can you keep it fresh? How can you keep it new? Keep yourself present in the moment. And so the only reason why I resist a pose, right, is because I think of it how it felt another time. If you think of each pose like you're approaching it for the very first time, you're just exploring, oh, how do I feel when I do this? Inhale. Exhale, walk back up through center. Good, swing through the knees, swing through the hips. Readjust, maybe you need some exhale breaths out through the mouth. Yeah. And left knee down. Good, yeah, so it's easier if you fold over the left knee that's why I want you to try to pull and fold over the left foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, right? You could even, Kendall, you could use your um, left elbow on your left knee and try to press it down. Good. Yeah. So the, the more the spine swings over the foot, the more stretch you're going to get through that outer head. You can surrender the weight of your rib cage, surrender the weight of your upper body. Inhale. Fill the breath into some place that needs cleaning that you want to wipe out the tension. Keep the legs, come back up through center. And then continue to walk back until you're facing the wall back behind you. Squeeze through the belly. And then drop down onto forearm. On your forearms, if there's any way you could get some length through that opposite arm. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Breathe, Breathe out. Okay. Kendall, keep your legs, come back up to center. You're gonna be facing the top of your mat. And then that back right leg, swing it around and stack it on top of your left leg. Good, okay. Now I grab my upper flesh, like on my upper leg, and I internally rotate it. Yeah, so that I kind of, you know what, Kendall? Shift and turn towards me. I want to see your alignment a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bring that top right foot all the way that if there was a block on the outside edge of your left knee, your foot would come off. Like you were stepping into the ground. Yes, exactly. And then it's the same thing on the bottom leg. It's flush. It's in line. Oh, now I feel like you're in it, right? You feel it more? Okay, now I'm gonna take my L of my hand and I'm gonna take it into my hip flexors, like where my crease is. Like I can feel the muscles like freaking out, okay? Roll the shoulders back, open the heart, inhale. And from the ball and socket joint of your hip, start to hinge in. Back out, inhale. 
straight spine. Look forward towards me with an open heart. Only go in as far, Kendall, as you can keep your heart open back out. Ooh, clear it out here. Inhale. And then as you fold in, we're going to take the elbows onto the knee and ankle. Use your elbows pressing down and you're trying to panini press that bottom shin. Where can you soften? Oh. Look slightly forward. Can you walk your hands forward? And can you drop down onto your elbows in front of your shins? And then I'm really sorry about this because I think it's really hard. Pull your elbows back against your knees or shins and pull the heart forward and do cobra. Cobra with the chest. Ugh. Three. Pull oh, and lengthen the spine too. And the only good thing about today's class is you're not doing a bunch of sun salutations. You're just sticking with it. Now we're going to stay low and we're going to walk it over and you're going to try to get that right elbow into the sole of your right foot. Go the other way. Walk to the, walk the other way. Yep. Put your right elbow into the sole of your right foot. Try to Push your right knee to the door, to the living room, and then you push into the backhand and twist, and maybe you could bring both elbows down onto the floor. Vacuum the belly button back in and up. Push the right knee down on top of the left foot. How does that rebound through your body? As you come back up through center, lean back, extend your legs forward, ah, and shake it out. Bueno, no bueno, you're feeling it? I'm feeling it. It feels yeah. good though. It's, it's tight. tight. It's very intense, right? So it's a big one. Okay. And then second side, right shin bone will go down. But it's like a lot of re repeating the patterns. Mm -hmm. And once your right shin bone is down, we got to get that ankle all the way up. And and I know that my ankle is in the, in, isn't in the right spot because my foot will like sickle. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I need to grab my thighs and internally rotate them. Yeah, and it just feels like I get a little more movement. Thumbs go into the hip crease. I mean, just do dynamic movement first. So I rock back, and I don't even care if my knee lifts, right? I rock back until I feel some space. And then hinge forward with an open heart. And then it's a new river. It's a fresh breath. Inhale back off. Stretching the belly button away from the pubic bone. Pubic bone presses down towards the floor. That's super hard to do. One more back off. Hip hinge in. Now use your elbows on that top shin bone. And Nini, press it down. Okay. So it feels worse, but feels better. It's like that good kind of hurt for me not to be passive in this pose. I used to just hang in it. Actually, the more I press my top shin bone down onto my bottom shin bone and the bottom shin bone down into the floor, it's like it gives me a little bit more control to then be able to lengthen the spine up and out. 
good. Can we drop down again onto our elbows? Wait, I'm literally starting to. <laughs> and then use the elbows. Pulling against the shin bones. This is where we're getting our cobras today. This is where you're getting, yes. Think to widen. Remember when I talk about like the booty band on your upper thighs? Think to widen your upper thighs out as you hinge in. Good. And then we're going to stay low. We're going to walk towards the door over to the right. Put that left elbow into the sole of your left foot. Plant the palms and try to use the strength of your left elbow to push your left knee towards the uh, nightstand. Push it away from you wide in the upper thigh. And then I have a huge difference between sides. Like on the other side, I can get my elbows down. On this side, it's nowhere close. One. Inhale. Maybe an exhale out through the mouth. Two. Inhale. Exhale for three. Great job. Come up through center. Right. And I know I do like good deep cleaning work when it when it's like hard to come out of the pose. Legs can go in front of you. Shake out your hips. But cross your ankles, Kendall. We're gonna come into tabletop and you're gonna be fine just facing me. Yep, on your mat. Good. Step your legs out wide. Mm -hmm. Imagine pushing your bum back to the wall. Yeah, maybe even walk your hands back a little bit. Yeah, bum closer and closer to the wall. And then relax your rib cage, relax your neck. A fold and maybe a little bend to the knee. Inhale. Exhale. Hands walk back underneath your shoulders. Turn towards the door, Kendall. That's going to put you into a low lunge out over your right leg. Put your back right knee down. Maybe come up onto fingertips and now stretch out the front of that hip. Lift the back left knee. Parallel yourself to me. Over your left leg. Lift the back right heel, lower the back right knee down. On fingertips, or of course, if you need blocks, you're more than welcome to use blocks. Especially on a hot day, the more you exhale out through your mouth, it helps to release some heat. Inhale. Exhale, lift the back knee, parallel your feet, and then you know what? Can I, I'm gonna grab my blocks, okay? I, I want them. I'm too I'm too stiff. I need some help. Okay, good. And then I'm gonna walk to the back of my mat again over your right leg. Put your back left knee down. Yep. Support all your weight on that left block and then use your right elbow on your right knee. Mm -hmm. It does two things, correct? It pushes the knee forward and down towards the door, but then it also allows you to lift your chest. And I'd really, like, I obviously want you to feel it in the front of that left hip, but I also want you to get a little bit more of like the abdominals in the back bend. Release both hands to the block. Straighten your front right leg. 
are to Hanuman. So almost the whole class. Yeah, with that back left knee down, sweetie. Yeah, you can just put your left knee down unless it hurts. Yep. And straighten the front right leg. All right. So almost a full class. Like what time is it? It's 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 1050 right now for you. Like without hamstring stretching. Okay. Can you do more cow pose through your pelvis, even if I, you have to lift your chest more? Yeah, drag that right sitting bone back. Low lunge, shifting the weight forward into your front right leg. Back knee lifts, and we'll move ourselves through the midline, turning to face knee, feet parallel. Now that you have your block, Kindle, just put all the weight into your right block. Take your left arm up. Inhale. I just want to make sure that we do get like kind of total body rinse out the upper back. And for the mat, we got a ton of side body. As you put that left hand down, switch. So a lot of times when I've stretched out my side body this much, these twists are a little bit more manageable. Right hand down to the block. Pivot turn out over that left leg, back right heel lift. Back right knee down. Put all the weight into the right arm. It's okay if you like lock the elbow. And then please use your left elbow as a guide, helping you sink further in and lengthen out the abdominals. Inhale. Exhale, lift the back knee. We walk it back, final time, facing each other. Okay, so I think, Kendall, you can maybe go down onto Chicago style when you parallel and look. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, there we go, nice. I think that tells you how stiff my body is that I'm like actually trying to avoid <laughs> doing some of these stretches here. Yeah, but you're, so it's okay. I want you to go into your strongest cat pose that you can do. Cat pose, chin to chest, chin to chest, cat pose, round, tuck, 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 tuck. And then I want you to go into your strongest cow pose from the hips, from the hips, from the hips, from the hips. Does that feel any different? Yes. Yeah. So a lot of times I'll do something like a little bit wrong to back out. And then I'll try to do it right. So that takes, that puts slack on your hamstring. And then when you really focus on the hips going in the opposite direction, that's what puts tension on the hamstring. Inhale. Exhale. Okay, perfect. Come back into your low lunge. Now parallel your feet, turn to me. And I think on this Chicago style, you're gonna be able to turn your right foot open 45 degrees. We're preparing for a skandasana, okay? And now push your butt back to the wall, back to the wall, back to the wall, back to the wall, as you turn those left toes open. Keep pushing the butt to the wall, butt to the wall. Is your right heel on the floor? No, not even close. No. Okay, put a block underneath the heel, LA style, so that it's supported. Yeah, and now reach forward with your upper body. Mm -hmm. And use your hands to push your butt back to the wall to help you to ground your heel more. And then it's about, everyone cares so much about that right heel, but really it's about zipping up through your left leg, zip up through the ankle, the knee, the inner thigh. And then as you press into that block, you're gonna come back up through center. 
Ooh, I think your legs are going to be cooked after this. Yeah. You might, yeah, you might be a little bit taller, actually. Left toes turn out, 45 degrees. Begin to bend in the left knee, start to turn that right foot open. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. And no problem. Slide that block. And kind of get used to the balance, getting used to the shape. Press into the core of your left heel as you straighten your left leg up through center. Good. And then tabletop position. And I think I would like you to end as you come into tabletop. Can you swing your legs back up the wall again today since you're right there? Okay. Again, in the heat, sometimes like your like feet and ankles can feel, feel kind of like, like fat and yeah. Oh, yeah. Really, yeah, we yeah, we can really help blood flow here. <sighs> Take a breath in. Out through the mouth, clean the mind. Inhale into the heart. Exhale, clear out the emotional body. One more breath, inhale. Exhale, let all that physical tension drain out. And then I imagine like light as a feather, like what would it feel like in my face, my neck, my shoulders, my arms, if everything was feather-like. Inhale. Exhale. Okay, so these metaphors, they do help me. Like I'm catching myself and I'm seeing like, oh, when I'm having this conversation, I'm bringing in the frosting and the crumbs and the stuff from before. Like, let me approach it clean slate. Standing in a new river with every breath. Wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Put your arms up and over. Bend your knees. Roll to the right. And press up to find seated. Hmm. Mm, right? Woo. 
holding the hands in front of the heart center. So now, right? This is when the wor real work begins. Like when someone starts talking and you feel some frosting, like kind of building up in your mind, can we wipe it away? Taking the thumbs to your third eye, bow forward to seal your practice. Jai, Hidatma, 